Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to be comparing the Raspberry Pi 4B and the Jetson Nano. Both of these 2019 SBCs are potential boards to upgrade to from a Raspberry Pi 3B or 3B Plus, and I'll therefore be including some Raspberry Pi 3B and 3B Plus test results in my performance benchmarks. Right, here we have the Raspberry Pi 4B and the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. Or, to be more accurate, this is a Raspberry Pi 4B 4GB model, and this is a Jetson Nano SOM, a system on a module, plugged into the carrier board that comes in the Jetson Nano developer kit. And the prices for these two are about $55 or £53 for the 4GB Raspberry Pi 4B, and $99 or £95 for the Jetson Nano developer kit. And before some of you say in the comments you can't buy a Jetson Nano for those prices, you can, you go directly to the NVIDIA website. So, I've reviewed both of these boards in recent videos, but I'll just give you a very quick a comparison of the hardware here. In terms of the CPU, the Raspberry Pi 4B is based on a quad-core ARM Cortex-A72 chip, running at 1.5 gigahertz, whereas the Jetson Nano is based on a quad-core ARM Cortex-A57 CPU running at 1.43 GHz. So the Jetson Nano has got a slightly slower CPU and a slightly earlier version. The Raspberry Pi A72 is based upon the earlier ARM Cortex-A57 on the Jetson Nano. In terms of memory, both of the boards have got 4 GB of a low-power DDR4 RAM, so they're exactly the same there. But in terms of a GPU, they're very different. The Raspberry Pi 4B has got a Video Core 6 Broadcom GPU, as far as I'm aware. Whereas the Jetson Nano has got a 128 CUDA core NVIDIA Maxwell GPU. The big difference between these two boards is that we've got a much more powerful GPU on the Jetson Nano. In terms of connecting displays, both of these boards will support two 4K displays. On the Raspberry Pi 4B, we've got two micro HDMI connectors down there, whereas on the Jetson Nano, we've got a display port and a full-size HDMI connector. And both of these boards have got hardware decoding for H.264 and H.265 video at up to 60 frames a second 4K, but only with the right software. And that's going to be critical to keep in mind in these tests. Just because a piece of hardware can do something, doesn't mean it can be delivered with the software you've got available. So uh, software support for the GPU is critical in terms of different applications for these boards. In terms of storage, both these boards are going to be booting their operating system from a micro SD card, which is uh, under here on the pile, under here on the, the Jetson Nano, so no difference there. In terms of uh, networking, they both got a gigabit Ethernet. There we are, we've got the sockets on the board there. The Pi has also got a Wi-Fi, 802.11bg NNAC Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth 5.0 on the Pi, whereas there is no onboard wireless networking on the Jetson Nano, but it has got an e-keyed M.2 slot, which can take a wireless module. But because we haven't got it on the, on the board, here I'm going to be doing all my tests where I need to go online using the gigabit Ethernet. In terms of the ports, you can see at the front of both of them, they've got four Type-A USB ports. Uh, USB 3 and USB 2, two of each on the Pi, four USB 3 on the Jetson Nano. In terms of other connectors, we've got a, a MIPI, a CSI, camera serial interface connector on the, both boards. We've also got a display connector on the Raspberry Pi. Both boards have got a 40-pin GPIO connector, Raspberry Pi compatible, hardly surprising it's Raspberry Pi compatible on the Raspberry Pi, and they've also both got a pin which allows us to have a power over Ethernet modules pl plugged in there. Talking of power, the Raspberry Pi 4B is powered by a USB-C going in here, 5 volts, whereas on the Jetson Nano we can go in via either micro USB or this barrel jack. And both of the boards can also be powered via GPIO. So uh, there we are, that is the two boards. And the final thing I need to say is I'm not going to be running the same operating system on each board in the test. I know that will immediately annoy some people. And what I'd say is computers in use are systems, combinations of hardware and software. 
And on each of these boards, I'm going to be using the operating system, which is the one supplied and intended to be used and supported most by the manufacturer, which should have the best drivers for the boards. So specifically, I'm going to be running the latest version of Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi 4B, and I'm going to be running Jetpack on the uh, Jetson Nano, which is supplied by NVIDIA for this board. And both of these are ARM-based Linux distributions, which are based on Debian. So there we are. That is the hardware. Let's now put it on test. Right, here we are in Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi 4B and in Jetpack on the Jetson Nano. And it's worth pointing out that Jetpack is a 64-bit operating system, while the latest version of Raspbian remains 32-bit for backwards compatibility with previous Pis. Anyway, let's get going with our first performance test, which is going to be this, the Octane Web Browser Performance Benchmark, which we're running in Chromium. Now, as you can see, Octane runs a range of tests, and in particular tests out JavaScript performance, and reports a single final benchmark where the highest score is the best. So, let's speed through to the end, and here we are, we have a score of 8.220 for the Pi 4B. So, if we now switch to Jetpack on the Jetson Nano, and again bring up the Chromium browser and run Octane, we get a score of 7474, a little bit slower for the Jetson Nano. I've also run the Octane test on the Raspberry Pi 3B, resulting in a score of 2672, as well as on the Pi 3B Plus, which delivers a result of 2967. So, if we now amalgamate these numbers, we can see we have significantly better browser performance on both the Pi 4B and the Jetson Nano compared to the previous Pi 3 models, with the Pi 4B at the top of the table. Right, our next tests are of USB data transfer speed and the speed of reading a board's microSD card. So what I've done here is to connect a USB 3 SSD and we're going to test its read performance using the HD Palm or HD Parameters utility, which will give us a pretty good idea of the speed of a USB interface. Now, clearly this test could be bottlenecked by the speed of the SSD, which is well over 400 megabytes a second, but in practice, I don't think we'll hit this limit. So, here we are in Raspbian on a Pi 3B, where I'll now execute the command to run a read performance test of a connected SSD with no caching. And uh, here it goes. And uh, there we are. The Pi 3B is transferring data over its USB ports at about 28.4 megabytes a second. I'm now going to repeat the test for the microSD card. And once again, things are happening. And we get a result of about 21.7 megabytes a second for the speed of reading the card on the Pi 3B. So, let's now move to a Pi 3B Plus, and I'll speed through the same tests. And, as we would expect, we get very similar results of about 28.3 megabytes a second for USB transfer speed and about 22.1 megabytes a second for microSD card read. And I should note here that all tests are using the same USB 3 SSD and a SanDisk Ultra microSD card. Well, it now gets exciting because we can move to the Raspberry Pi 4B and see how much faster it is. So again, we'll run through all the tests. And here we can see a dramatic improvement to about 265.2 megabytes a second for USB transfer speed and 40.8 megabytes a second for microSD card transfer speed. So very big improvements here. And finally, we'll repeat the tests on the Jetson Nano. And here the USB transfer speed is a little higher at 288.4 megabytes a second while SD card performance is significantly better at 62.5 megabytes a second. So once again, we'll look at all of this data on a table, which makes it very clear indeed that a Raspberry Pi 4B or a Jetson Nano offer a very significant upgrade over the Raspberry Pi 3 models.
Now, let's compare 1080p YouTube playback in Chromium, and here we're looking at the performance of a Raspberry Pi 3B. And as you can see, we have a very significant number of dropped frames. Transitioning to the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, things are pretty similar, with the number of drop frames still very high. And there's not a lot more I can say here. If we now move to the Raspberry Pi 4B, playback I think looks a little better, although we've still got a great many dropped frames. YouTube playback always seems to be a bit problematic on a Pi, results seem to be a bit variable. And uh, the performance here I think is a bit worse than when I first tested out the Raspberry Pi 4B with pre-release software. And I guess it is still early days for the Raspberry Pi 4B, the software may be optimised further than this, so maybe in time we'll get better in browser YouTube playback. Finally, let's go to the Jetson Nano, and here the performance is, I think, significantly better. It's not perfect, but we've got far fewer dropped frames. But again, playback could be improved with better software support for the board's GPU, quite a powerful GPU here, and I'll come back to this issue of software support in the Jetson Nano at the end of the video. Right. Having shown you that YouTube playback is not perfect, I thought we should play some local clips on both the Pi 4B and the Jetson Nano. So uh, here I've got a tester 1080p clip to play on the uh, Pi 4B, and uh, that looks like it's okay. Little uh, thing at the start there, but basically that plays fine. This is obviously very familiar footage to us. That's playing without any problems at all. This test clip is okay. And uh, we can also play a range of different formats here without any issues. Uh, straight out of the box, here's an MTS file uh, off a camera, some cooling towers, that's also playing fine, no problem. So we've got no problems with local video playback, at least at a 1080p. Although you'll see the Pi is quite busy doing this, it's a, what, 44-45% CPU load there, so I doubt we've got a hardware acceleration for video playback running here yet in VLC on the Pi 4B. And you'll also see up here that the Pi is getting rather hot. It's at about 61, 62 degrees. And for this test and for the test I'll be showing you in the next segment, I've already got a, quite a large heat sink on the Raspberry Pi 4B. And I'll be looking at cooling on the Raspberry Pi 4B in a future video. My view is, having been testing this board out, you really do need some sort of cooling solution on the Raspberry Pi 4B. Anyway, let's transition to the Jetson Nano so we can play a video clip over here. And again, you'll see I've got the system monitor running so we can see a CPU usage. And we've got the same test clip, which I'll run up there. And it'll play and we can bring it up to a full screen. And again, there's no problem playing a 1080p video on the Jetson Nano. That's working absolutely fine. Again, some very familiar video. And if I just to flick it like that and bring up the, uh, the monitor, you can see that Again, the CPU is relatively busy playing this video. Not as busy as it was on the Raspberry Pi 4B, but I do suspect again that we're not using hardware accelerated video playback here. We're not using the GPU, we're using the CPU to play this video. Anyway, it basically works so you can be reassured you've got good 1080p video playback on both the Raspberry Pi 4B and the Jetson Nano. Right, for our final test, as you might have noticed, I've installed a Caden Live, the video editor, on the Jetson Nano and the Raspberry Pi 4B. So let's launch it on the Jetson Nano. Let's show you how long it takes to run up Caden Live, having a little think down there. And uh, there we are. And we'll bring in a, a recent file, which is uh, there, I think. And there we are. We've got a video edit on the, uh, the Jetson Nano, which is a uh, I think pretty impressive. This is actually the video clip we were just looking at. The test clip was generated in Caden Live on one or other of these boards. I can't remember which one, but uh, it certainly works. It doesn't play perfectly. I am using transcoded clips here, but this is a usable video editor on a, a single board computer, which is pretty good. It struggles a bit there through the dissolve, as you can see, and then goes back to normal playback. So that's uh, absolutely not bad at all. So this is a, let's say, it is usable. It's not brilliantly scrubbable, you know, it's, it's something you'd have to work with a bit, but we have got workable video editing on the, the Jetson Nano using a Caden Live. So let's flip back to the Raspberry Pi 4B, and uh, 
here we are, and we'll run up Caden Live here. Again, you can see how it uh, copes with running up a video editor on a single board computer. We're really stressing out these boards and these tests, but that's what tests are for, isn't it? And uh, we'll load in the file, which I think is that version. I'm having to be careful having exactly the same edit on the same SSD being accessed by different boards. But uh, there we are again. We've got uh, video editing running on the uh, single board computer on the Raspberry Pi 4B. And uh, I have to say it's not quite as stable here as it is on the Jetson Nano, which is why I stopped it there. It does sometimes crash. And of course, this is not necessarily a problem with the Pi 4B. This could be just how uh, Caden Live happens to work on the system. But uh, what I thought we'd do is to render out this uh, section of video, this about 40 second clip on both boards, so we can see their relative performance. So let's go to render and we'll go to scripts. And I've set up the script so it'll be exactly the same on each board. So if I start off that script like that to render out the file, and then we'll speed through to the end. And there we are, we've had a render time of what, two minutes, 10 seconds on the Raspberry Pi 4B. And uh, it got rather hot in the process, it actually hit 80 degrees up here during that process, which is very hot considering we've got a heat sink on the board. Anyway, let's flip back to the Jetson Nano and uh, we'll again render out exactly the same piece of video using a script. And here, as you can see, we've got a render time of 1 minute 39 seconds. So 1 minute 39 seconds to render out the clip on the Jetson Nano compared to 2 minutes 10 seconds on the Raspberry Pi 4B. So the Jetson Nano has clearly got significantly better performance in Caden Live than the Raspberry Pi 4B. The Raspberry Pi 4B and the Jetson Nano are both excellent maker boards. Right now, if you need an SBC for more complicated AI, robotics and related projects, then the Jetson Nano is the board to go for. Whereas for most people for more general SBC applications, the Raspberry Pi 4B is the better and cheaper option. This said, with the right software support, the Jetson Nano could be an amazing media and retro gaming SBC. And in that context, I've been in contact with the developers at NVIDIA working on the Jetson Nano to ask about future support in terms of media playback and things on the Jetson Nano. And what they've told me, I've got it down here on my tablet, I can tell you exactly. Uh, what they've told me is that they are still in the planning stages of FFmpeg integration for the Jetson hardware codecs, which would enable applications like Plex and Kodi to run with uh, CUDA core support on the Jetson Nano, which would be amazing, wouldn't it? So right now that support isn't there, but it's worth us keeping an eye on the Jetson Nano, because if we do get that uh, support for the, uh, the GPU for media stuff, then it's going to be a whole different story. So. That is now it for this video. Hopefully you've found my performance comparisons useful. Uh, if you've liked the video, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.